How you doing, everybody? I'm Chris Free and Bennett with the Vancouver Film School. Welcome to the Storyteller Studio podcast. Today we have an awesome guest, longtime friend of Vancouver Film School, friend of mine, a really fascinating woman. She is the CEO of a little company called castingworkbook.com. Casting Workbook, this is a really interesting company. You guys are celebrating 25 years, right, Susan? That's it. Welcome okay. to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. We have been such a fan of what you're doing at Casting Workbook for a long time, and you've been doing it even longer. So it's 25 years, is that right? That's it. Yep, 94. This is an interest. Now, if you are an actor, if you're in the business, if you're a, a, a casting uh, director or an agent, um, Susan, maybe it's better if I let you do that. T give me, give me the, the, the pitch. What is Casting Workbook for my audience who may have never heard of your company before? Okay, so this is interesting because most people get it wrong. They think it's like a collection of headshots. And right. so Casting Workbook is really workflow. It's, ca it's casting directors, posting breakdowns, going to agents. Agents then submit their talent or actors directly right um, and then there's this whole scheduling thing there's there's a there's a, a, a an element where casting directors have offline software they capture it in a studio they put this all through a kind of a system uh, it's it's a massive enterprise suite of software yeah and and I think you just gave it a very literal definition for me my first exposure to it was when I first came to Vancouver Film School and I can recall a time in the industry 25 years ago when we didn't have <laughs> casting workbook. And I think for a lot of people who, who, who probably still haven't been exposed to it, they, they think it's still the old fashioned, okay, you get the call or the email that morning and you need to go to X address and you need to sit and wait till they call you in and you're gonna get in there and you're gonna do your audition and then you're gonna leave and you're gonna see what happens next. And you have truly brought the internet that sort of uh, venture, startup, entrepreneurial tech side. The, the, you've, you've brought a little bit of Silicon Valley to Hollywood North and to the rest of the world. Yeah. That's a fascinating thing. Uh, are you surprised that it's now 25 years later? At the time, <sighs> did you think it was going to work? Because when you really looked 25 years ago, this may or may not have seemed like a genius idea. In hindsight, it was very smart. But what, did, what were you thinking 25 years ago? Oh my God, well, I was, I was in the business already a little bit, and I love tech, and I had studied some tech, different types of tech, um, but the internet was just coming on, and uh, for me, it was, yeah, I, I mean, as soon as I kind of recognized what was going on, I mean, the industry was so antiquated. They were sending faxes. They were calling. Yeah, right. They had head books. Yeah. Um, and everything was really, really slow. Only 25 years ago. That's like 1995. When we started, there were DOS machines. Oh, my God. There was dial no dial-up. There was like basically in the houses. Um, a lot of people didn't have an email address. YouTube was years away from happening. That's right. There I didn't even get email till, till 97, I think. Hotmail didn't exist until yeah, right. 97, I think. Oh that was the first webmail. So crazy. So here we were. And we thought, so we built this website, it was great. We had the casting director conversation with the agent. And what was cool is that at the time, actors had to duplicate 50 copies of a black and white headshot. And then they would give it to their agent. Yeah. That's how we came up with the pricing. It was $42 a year for an actor to do 50 headshots and give it to their agent. And that became our price. So we built this thing, and it was like, okay, we got to go in Vancouver. Vancouver was really, like, excited about it. But then they said, go to Toronto. We went to Toronto, and, and the infrastructure was terrible. Like, people just, there was no, there was no high speed. Right, but right, dialogue. yeah, yeah. So we thought, oh, man, this is, and, and people out there said, it's going to be 10 years before you get this off the ground. So we thought about it, and we became an internet service provider so we could give them their dial-up account and their email. And we bought laptops from IBM uh, for every casting director. That's and extraordinary. We, and we dropped it on their desktop. So in three weeks. DOS. Three weeks. Yeah, DOS. Just getting one computer online <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> was right. like, forget about it. Yeah. We gave them these think pads. They were like this thick. And they had like a little trackpad on them. They were four grand at the time in 96, 97. Oh, my God. Gave them these computers. But it was like. 
th then we were there. And did, did you think that the, like you, you see the onset of the internet and mm -hmm. a lot of people are going, okay, let's, this wave is going to take us somewhere. For you, pre-internet, pre did you see it as this, this is an antiquated way of, of doing this and let's apply a, 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 a web solution? Or was it, um, were you, because I've, I've known you for a while and I, I do think you're an entrepreneurial person. Your brain thinks and works that way. Mm -hmm. Did you think that you could apply uh, did you think you could apply the web to to this? And uh, because if you didn't, someone was going to, you know, did the idea come to you first, or was this I, I need to get there because I, I can see what's happening all around me? I mean, America Online is taking off, email is taking off. Did your industry really need this? Um, I don't know. I mean, nobody was doing it. It was so early. Right. Um, There's still a very small competitive landscape for you. Well, we started actually. We started in in locations. We started um, uh, North Shore Studios. We had X Files library, three thousand types of locations. <laughs> started doing that and doing production. And of course, I had been acting and dancing and all that stuff. So for me, this was like a no-brainer. I thought, ah, oh, love the casting side of things. So we got involved in that. And when I saw the opportunity with a casting director posting to an agent, it was like, oh my god! Like we had so casting directors and agents worked separately. Right. They had never, I mean, you, there's no concept of a platform that talked to one another before no. the internet. Never. No. So this was really new. And I actually ended up introducing um, the president of the Talent Managers Association and the president of the Casting Society, who had done business together for 20 years. And I called them to a meeting because what one was doing was affecting the other for the first time ever. So wow. casting director would post something and the agent would go, oh, my God, this is like, this is hard. So I said, well, let's just sit down together and put a computer between the two of them. Right. <laughs> they were just, Tina, it was, I think it was uh, Deirdre Bowen, who's amazing. She's still head of Alliance Atlantis. And uh, Sherry Caldwell from, she, from Cleveland, I think. She was like so hard on me. She's like, Susan. <laughs> so we, d we put them together and I said, okay, this is what's happening. Right. They pushed me aside. They were like, get out of the way. What ver if, if this was like um, Windows, what version are you on now of Casting Workbook? Like, are you oh. updating? I mean, 25 years, you must have gone through many platforms. What do you think you're on? How many iterations? Oh my God. It's so many. Tw 25 or more, I don't know. Well, we, we got a call from 20th Century Fox in 2003, 4 yeah. to put the first videos online. And that was like a complete new rebuild. But we've done a lot of iterations since then. Like, we're doing it constantly. You were there for, for so much of how Hollywood, yeah. while you're building this business, there, Hollywood and this industry is transforming. You've got mm -hmm. the, the, you know, film goes away, and now we have digital um, cinematography. Yeah. You've got the, the, the birth and the death of Blockbuster. Dylan, that was a, a video rental company before you were born, but um, uh. <laughs> you probably wouldn't know what that is. But um, you've got you've got the early onset of Netflix, which was a rental service delivering movies Using to the people mail. in the that mail. That was so cool. And all this time, you've got casting workbook building on the web, and mm. you're going and you're going. Did you think that? Do you, to this day, I'm curious, from the perspective of a casting director, do you say agent or director? Director, casting director. Casting director. Casting director and an agent separate. I want to make sure, agent. to yeah. be clear, these are, these, this platform speaks to three of them, and yes. I want to use that correctly. I don't want to yep. be confusing. By opening up the web, you have democratized the access for, for actors, in particular, who don't live in major cities or industry metros mm -hmm. to have visibility and 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 reach into the 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 casting director world does that make the casting director's job better easier harder more challenging is it is it for for you it's great as a business and for 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 all those those dreamers and the the, the talent out there yeah. talk to me about your relationship with casting directors because you've got a really really fascinating one over the years and it sounds like even more lately globally they, they, they must be seeing value. What were they thinking at the time when you were overloading their, their plates with it? Well, I mean, at first it was like, oh, my God, life's never going to be the same. Um, but I think that there was a lot of, like, they got it. I mean, the first thing we did was we, 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 we took, we went from the west coast to east through a breakdown on the wall called Live from Toronto. 
had all the agents in Vancouver submitting and making really funny jokes and it was like so fun. Um, so for them, they kind of went, oh, wow, wow. And so we just kept evolving. Um, but for them, totally. Um, casting directors, they want to see as many people as they can in the time that they have and the constraints keep coming down. And while, while you're, you're talking here and we're going through this, what I'll do is I'll flash some some video in the background that just sort of shows people kind of surfing through to give them an idea of how it works and what yeah. the interface is like because it's Beautiful. gorgeous mm -hmm. and I've seen I've seen it myself and I go I, I is it possible to be equally amazed and not amazed all at once where you go of course this is yeah. it, it should have always been like this yeah. this is a really interesting thing that when you're saying the the, the lookbooks that we would we would have oh, prior to this yeah. it, it feels so archaic oh. um, talk to me also about voice over talent this is a really interesting area that you guys are doing some stuff. Are we able to talk about that at the moment? Yeah, we can. We can yeah, because I think with Netflix, with Prime, with Disney Plus, with Peacock, blah, blah, all the streamers now about to explode coming into 2020, the need to globalize the content must be huge. Talk to me about what you're seeing on the voiceover end and why is this an important space for that, for that talent? There, well, there's a lot of stuff going on in voice, and there was a lot of disruption happening about two years ago. And we got a call from the Talent Agent Managers Association back east who said, you guys have built this enterprise software for on camera. Do you think you could build something for voiceover? And at the time, it was interesting because the agents were being threatened through kind of a disruption, the voice agents. And um, there were companies coming in and wanting, kind of like Uber, wanted to take out the cabs. But the thing is, these agents are really important. So we looked at it and said, yeah, we'll do it. And we spent, you know, a million, million and a half dollars building out a voiceover enterprise system, which we're now, um, we're, we're testing in Canada. We're running trials. Um, but it was really a cool project because all of a sudden we've got to take everything we learned from on camera and apply it to voice and look at it really new way. Yeah. And I got on the phone with some friends from Europe and I was just trying to figure out like what, tell me everything you know about voice. I called um, the, the top guy I knew in voice and animation in, in Hollywood and said, you know, head of uh, Fox features casting and animation. I said, I don't know anybody, <laughs> give me some names. So he gave us names and we went down and met with a bunch of the, uh, all of the big voice agents um, and put their people online. But what was interesting, and the, probably the best part, is that this um, disruption was happening, and we thought, we got to protect the agents. How do we do that? Right. And one of the things that we've noticed in voice, uh, I was talking to this guy, and he's you know, rambling, and I'm writing on this giant piece of paper, and he said something about adaptations, and I said, whoa, 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 whoa what's that? He said, well, it's where, you know, if, if when, when you they produce a movie, they have to put it in 30 languages. Right. And that's everything. That's books. That's audiobooks. It's games. It's, it's web. It's yeah. film, TV. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. it right now on Netflix. I'm watching El Chapo. Oh, my God. And it's, it's clearly, yes. uh, you know, yeah. English, you know, North American yeah. accent actors speaking over all Latino, <laughs> exactly. you know, Mexican right. actors mm -hmm. in, in our, in our word dialect and in our, in our vernacular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and it doesn't always even line up with the close captioning. Um, it's, oh yeah, no, that's, it's, that's it's, true. but it's in such high demand. You can get it. You can basically push a button now and you can completely watch anything Yeah, because of the voice. Yeah. Well, what we did was we said, that's really cool. And I, and I asked him a few questions about it. He, he gave me an analogy, Robert De Niro and, uh, uh, Al Pacino for the first time did a movie together. And in Brazil, the same voiceover actor used to do both of them, which was fine until heat came out in 2005. And right. they had to find a new voice for one of them, oh, wow. and it bombed. And it's it's about brand. <laughs> so you've got you've got these brands where you've got a voice which which is a brand, and then let's say you have to replicate Al Pacino in, and it's and it gets more interesting than that. So I thought, oh my God, what if we could do that electronically? And we went, well, so would an actor or could an actor should an actor? Mm -hmm. uh, because some, I was about to do a De Niro impression, and then I went, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Because I just Come remembered, on, Chris, it's right terrible. It. But my point was, should an actor go in from a voice perspective and create an audition or, or a file or an account with Casting Workbook 
and say, here's my De Niro in case you ever need to cast a guy like De Niro? Or do they do their own thing and then you allow the, the technology and whatever the algorithm to, to like what's is this? Are you worried this will become a place for really bad impressions of no. of celebrity voices hoping to get work? Or is it designed for a, a true casting director to go, I need someone who sounds like Bette Midler or Meryl Streep? So that's that is actually perfect analogy. No. Because there's a, there's a whole bunch of laws around that, and right. that Bet actually sued, I think, for that particular uh, thing that you can't use her likeness. But let's say, for example, you've got the animation studio here. You've got a child actor that can't do the part anymore, and you need somebody that sounds like it. We can run the right. voice. Lion King. We can, Simba's grown up. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. That was twenty. There you years go. Ago. We could find Jonathan. We could run Jonathan Taylor Taylor Thomas's voice yeah. through our ser- service and find his doppelganger. In any language, At, and it would and in English probably be a yeah. younger age from twenty. No, sorry, you're saying from you would take his audio voice from like twenty years ago, Lion King. Yeah, and find a, a, a likely a child actor today. Today, that's incredible. Yeah, use it using uh, algorithms and AI. I mean, that's incredible, yeah. and I would think that that you have opened up, you have single handedly allowed the internet and the the industry is is feeding the beast ultimately. But you're saying, hey. Now's a great time to be talent. Now's a great time to be an actor doing voice stuff. Yeah. And you're really serving that up. And I think you're giving, we've had a bunch of voice actors on the show. They yeah. all know about Casting Workbook. They all sing your praises. And I think you're providing, I think for some of them who are older, they remember a period of time before <laughs> Casting Workbook. And then they're after. Really old. <laughs> yeah, well, no, they're, they're, you know, 25 years goes by pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, it really yeah. does. But I think, uh, you know, Hollywood had been around, you know, 50 years before that. So I think your disruption sure. may have happened uh, 25 years ago, but you're continuing yeah. to do it even in the voice work. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me about uh, the when is the right time? Do you what your customer right now, you're trying to satiate casting directors, agents and talent all in right. all in one thing. Um I'm an investor, I'm a market analyst, I'm with CNBC and I'm saying they're never going to make it. That's too many people you're trying to keep happy. Can you can your can your business successfully meet the needs of all three of those? I'm I am i am giving you a hard question thinking yeah, no, how no, do you good. fight back from that? No, I mean we've been doing it for 25 years. I mean we we service the production the the casting director, the agent. We have offline software for casting that is amazing, and it reaches right into the agent side. It makes the agent's life easier. Uh, the agent can send the materials to their actors. I mean, back it's just the, making lives easier oh, in those tr- in that yeah. triangle. Our software, which is the probably the most differentiating part about us, is that everything talks to everything else. It's completely relational. You, uh, I know. Uh, I wanted to say too. You've you've just launched a new mobile app. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? That's yeah. cool because in the age of TikTok, Snapchat, yeah. selfie this, selfie that, mm-hmm. now what you're doing is taking it one more step further yeah. and talent can, can they don't even need a computer, right? Oh, no. You I could mean, audition from your phone. Oh, 4K. Is that a, is that a good thing? Oh, yeah. T- I mean, the cameras are amazing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd love for you to show this piece. That would be amazing, like uh, on the background because the, the what we have in the app is, first of all, the tapings would come in in every format imaginable. Yeah, Dylan, run the clip while we're talking here of, of you're going to, you'll send me the one yeah. and I'll, we'll run that so people can see it. So go ahead. Yeah. So basically, the, the tapes would come in upside down, backwards, different formats. They couldn't open them uh, from everywhere in via Dropbox or Hightail or whatever, just from everywhere. Right, of course. Then the agent was left out of the loop. Or the agent had to figure right. out how to do it. And then the agent had to get the casting director. Um, the quality wasn't great. They had to figure out how to put uh, titles and captions and, and who is this? And did you name it right? Or did it just say, <laughs> right, this right. is my movie audition or something? And that w- they were like, who is this? Because you're going to get that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what we do is we lock it all in. So when the actor takes their, um, their, their phone, if they're a member, it comes for free. They can download the app with their membership. They can tape it. It tells them to turn their phone. It locks it in with the agency. Um, they can put in titles and captions with a click. It automatically puts a title card in there. Um, they can have multiple takes, slates, click a button, upload it, and they get a notice and it says, your agent just got this. 
I mean, like I said, this is where I'm amazed and not amazed all at once. That yeah. You go, that is incredible. And then you go, it should be like that. It should be. And the agent, the, the cool part is that the agent now is approving all these auditions before they go in and they go to casting and they're all done. So, so this is this is really extraordinary. And you are without question my 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 nominee for industry innovator of the year. And I'm putting you up against like <laughs> Quibi. I'm putting you up against like TikTok. Oh you know, all these, there's some really neat ones, but I just love what you're doing there and how every new iteration you're finding some, sometimes they're just subtle, they're small yeah. touches, but they're, yeah. you're clearly talking to casting directors mm -hmm. and actors and agents and going, give me your problems, tell me your problems. That's it. That's so true. And let's see if we can fix it. You've got an incredible team. I met a bunch of people at your yeah. team. I would, you know, I, I'm, I'm really not just pandering to you when I say they're, they're an all-star team there. What's your approach, your small team though too. Yeah, we're low. What's your approach to casting for your own organization? Have you, oh you know, it, you appear to have been very successful at doing this. How do you approach that? The, the kinds of people, they have to all have industry experience. What's the? They have to be passionate about the industry, number one. They have to have real skill. So mm -hmm. I only hire really, really great people. Yeah. Um, entrepreneurial. Um, they have to be passionate. Film and tech, usually. Yeah. Uh, real propensity toward that. And then I cut them loose. I like, uh, I've had guys that came in and they were doing the education stuff where they were going and teaching the business of acting. That was presented to me as, like, I want to get my teaching certificate. Can I do this? And uh, I said, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, then we got behind it. And we've had whole sections of our business grow out of just whims from our team. So that's, ex you're, you're, I, I, think, I think for a lot of people, I think it's because in particular in acting, we yeah. don't always associate it with that Silicon Valley startup innovation yeah. kind of industry. Yeah. It feels like there hasn't been a, uh, a breakthrough in a long time there, not, not that there needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. Certain things are kind of this classic industry type thing, and yet right over here in the corner, I always say to people, you gotta see, if you wanna see innovation, see what they're doing at Casting Workbook. I think yeah, it's really interesting. You. Are you, are you, when, when, does the, when does an actor need Casting Workbook? Is it when I am now successfully, uh, when I actually have an agent or I've gotten work or because you know what we're seeing more and more today Susan is in this YouTube content creator culture everyone has a podcast everybody yeah. can can be a YouTube yeah. creator and I think there is this perception that um, outside of acting in particular yeah. I can go and I can do that do you do you see any signs of because you have made access and that and that pathway so much more accessible to to casting directors, more, how, what's the nice way of saying this? Uh, maybe talent that hasn't been developed yet or isn't yeah. ready yet. What's your What's your take on that? Is it, it's only going to get bigger? What, how are you handling that? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, we we we're really committed to making sure that the actor who wants to get into the business, you know, how do we help them do that? And as you know, I mean, we come to Vancouver Film School. We uh, teach in probably two or three other dozen universities, at the, all the big schools. Yeah. And we post the showcases online. So we really encourage actors to go up, get trained, you know, produce stuff with your with your you know fellow actors right. and directors. Like get in the game, work your craft, um, and then look for an agent. So what we do is with the film schools, we we go to the graduating classes, we post them on the desktop of every agent and casting director the minute they graduate. So now we've got all these these showcases and we're seeing, we've seen entire classes get picked up by an agency within 36 hours. Holy smokes, like really? Like super fast. Really? So for us, it's about that feeder system. Like there, we had to build an infrastructure. So we're really excited about the, the new stuff that we're working on too, because it's more involved with those those actors getting started, like how do we give them a leg up? I mean, we've done some really neat, neat stuff um, in in that the app is growing. It's yeah. going to be. We're, it we're looks nice. I was just playing with it earlier, and we can um, <laughs> we can flash an image up. You can awesome. get it in the iTunes on iTunes. Yep. You can get it on Android, uh, Google Play, yes, as That's well. Right. Yep. Um, I'm assuming BlackBerry, no. It works on a BlackBerry. <laughs> it does. One of our guys no, actually uses a BlackBerry, and so we have to test still, it. Still, oh, yep. they still got the QWERTY. Scary, huh? Um, yeah. And I think that the the other question that you have to you have to ask too is, 
Is there a, can you be too young to be on Casting Workbook? No, I mean, we do Huggies commercials, so. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of babies, uh, stage moms and dads out there going, yeah. should I be looking yeah. at this for my child, whatever oh, yeah. their age? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're very involved with the kids. We've seen kids grow up right. through Casting Workbook. We have all their baby pictures and now their big pictures. Do you th- what's your take on um, without giving me your whole development roadmap? I would I would not want you to compromise your competitive strategy, but um, you're already doing what I would say, and I think anyone who checks out Casting Workbook is going to agree. You're doing a great job representing that that triangle of of customers. Um, what about indie filmmakers up the road who are looking for crew? What about um, uh, you know the, the the promotion and the marketing of a project, and they need staff and, a, and an agency to help do that. You could start to identify really quick, still what I call missing missing pools of of web that have not come along to the industry for some reason yet to yeah. to always solve these problems. Yeah. Um, is your mission to Amazon this whole thing, or are you going to stay true to that tr- that that triangle? Is that is are you able to talk yeah. about that without giving too much away? What's no, the f- what's the future looking like? Well, I mean, we're we're very focused. Yeah, we stay incredibly focused. You have been for twenty five years. Yes, we have. Yeah. and I think that we branch out, but it's always within the guise of what we do. So we haven't, we don't have any real plans for. I mean, we do work with the indies, and we're giving getting a lot more tools for the indie filmmakers to cast and use their projects but you know casting is is by committee now sure so at the highest level there might be 10 people that have to weigh in on a decision so we provide tools for that too where they can vote and rate on their phones not rate but you know they can make notes and right right you know and and uh, make those decisions i was i was reading uh i'm i'm almost done bob Iger's book ceo of disney um, I just love him. I'm such a fan of what Bob Iger has done over at Disney. And one of the cool things in his book that he talks about was, as CEO, he, he, you know, he would, one of the advantages he took for his own gain was uh, if he wanted to see an early look at a Star Wars script, because he could. He could be like, <laughs> have it on my desk, and he could find out <laughs> right. what they're doing. I'm like, right. oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. You, could, you would have that, that insight just at the snap of the finger. That would be really fun. Yeah. You know, without giving too much away, I know there are some there are some big celebrity auditions that come through Casting Workbook too. Do you ever, as the CEO, do you ever get to uh, needle through and take a look and watch some remarkable ones? Is there any stories you're allowed to share, or is that a yeah, no. is that a privacy thing? That's, <laughs> That's a, a total. Uh. We are so bound in terms of what we do, but yeah, and even the scripts is funny. We have one of the big pieces that we do. We have Smart Script. We do mathematical algorithm breakdowns with um, PDFs. And then we it gets posted into break the, into oh, scripts, wow. and then it writes sides and it, it watermarks them, passcode protects them, and it's all about security. Well, good. So, I mean, and it's, it should be. Uh, you've got Academy yeah. Award winners on your roster, right down to kind of first time actors or yeah. Pampers, you know, talent, <laughs> Baby, you know, whatever, right? I mean, that's a really. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you take that very seriously, and I think yeah. that's a really fascinating thing. Would you? W- what do you think of now uh, performance capture was my other question. It is becoming, from video games to just the, the explosion, even in animation, yeah. um, there, there's a higher demand than there's ever been for, for performance actors. Not necessarily just voice, yeah. but the true performance. Yeah. Is that, in your estimation, a subcategory or a separate category? Could someone who's got a, I, I know a great, a great guy, a good friend of mine, and that seems to be almost all the kind of work he does lately is performance capture. Um, do you see that as a, a subset of the of the actor, and, and is that an area that's growing for you guys in any capacity? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Not really. I mean, we haven't really. When you when you can you um, embellish like, a little bit? Like like Andy Circus, uh, you know, wearing the full performance capture suit in okay. Planet oh. of the Apes, or like uh, you know Benedict Cumberbatch, who's yes. playing Smog the Dragon mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, those are big names, but there's a lot of actors now who are, are, are almost exclusively putting on the suit and bringing to life those characters. Oh, okay. I wondered I if I wondered if they yeah, are like, and and motion capture as well. Like yeah, yes. yeah, Mo- motion and performance. So we already we already get we a lot of that goes through our site already. Yeah, like and is it go, gaming, I'm assuming is it going like, up? Uh, I, that's a great question. I have to look into that. Uh, we do yeah. the EA stuff, and sure. that stuff goes through the site. So it's yeah. So it gaming is. is is working with you too. Oh yeah, because they see it as traditional casting. I guess casting they is do. casting, right? That's right. They're looking for sure. talent, and and so we and we have it, and they we do Cirque du Soleil. We've seen, you know, Disney 
boats even stuff. I mean, there's cruise stuff goes oh, on wow. there sometimes. Would you somewhat. have guessed 25 years ago, someone would tell you the video game industry, and 25 years ago, we can all remember <laughs> that would have been at best like normal Nintendo, oh, the yeah. first oh. series run of it. Maybe Barely. maybe Nintendo, Super Nintendo would probably have been around then. That's maybe, right. Maybe GameCube. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. Uh, it's taking That's over. Right. You got yeah. animation going everywhere crazy yeah. now yeah. with yeah, so right. much of it. Like, yeah. would you have thought that, that that part of your business would be thriving the way it probably is? God, it's crazy. No. You know what's funny is like, and I say this to our staff all the time, we have no idea what we're going to be doing in five years. And I used to say that, and now it's one. Like, we don't know. It's just we are in such exponential growth. We don't, we're just kind of watching for opportunities and it's how do you stay innovative how do you stay what do you do to keep the pulse of an industry that is evolving daily weekly annually and in some ways not evolving much at all what how do you keep in and and out of it the right way just talking to people just i mean listening yeah you know um and and oh we had some great people like you know guys like mike hurd at 20th century fox he was writing all their big film deals he would call us up and say, hey, do you think you could do this? Or, you know, people would just challenge us. I mean, we, we became synonymous with computer. So whenever they wanted something, they were doing Fantastic Four up here, and they asked if we could mount a camera up a pole wirelessly and, and monitor the building of the bridge when they were building it up here. In the right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just did crazy. We were like, yep, we'll do it. You know, they, they, when, they, when they called and said, do you think you could put uh, – sessions on the internet we were like yep we had no idea i mean we had to rebuild everything but we did it and it's just like you look for opportunity and then you go what shit can we get up to now you know right? it's like that's yeah. it it's it's fun what do you uh, back to the youtube creator thing i wanted to ask you about this too i see uh, I, a, a good friend of mine is an agent for content creators yeah for, for youtubers yeah uh He's got he's got a thriving uh, business. They're busy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're in a lot of companies looking specifically for that type of talent. Mm-hmm. Are you purposely staying away from that? Is it inevitable? Would you predict or forecast eventually the YouTuber is going to go, hey, I uh, I want to audition for uh, the new, you know, Nike's looking for a content creator for their for their mm-hmm. this upcoming spot or product. Um, do you see that as a, as a place to play, or is that always going to, in your opinion, be a separate world? What's your take on that, if you don't mind me putting I you on the I think talent spot? is is talent, but also, um, you know, who's to say why somebody gets, you know, Gangnam Style can get picked up by CAA. You know, it's like, that right. happens, right? So, I mean, it's like, what, is, what does the world want? Yeah. And then, there's, then you've got fame. So, who's to say that that person shouldn't be included? Right. Yeah, it's probably the right yeah. attitude because I mm-hmm. think I don't think it's going away. Oh God, it, no. it seems to no. only be getting more. I mean, my 11 year old is convinced it's an option on <laughs> career day. <laughs> right. I love the kids. YouTube. You've got like, the best kids. What are you going to be when you grow up, son? It's uh, <laughs> probably a YouTuber. Maybe a. He so. sometimes he goes maybe a biologist or a YouTuber. A <laughs> YouTuber. That wasn't even a thing. That's so funny. And now that's a, a, a real sh- a subset genre and, and a lot of companies. I, you know, when I was at Sprint, we would work with, with them. Sometimes we just wanted yeah. a YouTuber to talk about, you know, a, a long distance plan or a mm-hmm. product that we were working with. Not always, yeah. you know, a traditional TV commercial or a spot that was, you know, running wherever. So it is a really fascinating time. What's your message to actors out there who are who haven't yet? Um, built a profile on casting workbook. Um, what would you say to them? Hurry, do it now. Wait till you've got you've got something. Yeah. When's the right time to make that a part of? And I, I really do. I wholeheartedly yeah. endorse it. There's no exchange of money going on here. I, I, I'm such a believer that talent needs to. Um, if you want to be an actor, there's there's yeah. a there's a couple essential things, and one of them is you've got to be a casting workbook. Um, when's the time to do that? When do you tell people? Well, you know, it's funny because we've been so focused on the, the name actors and on the big represented talent, and we're coming out right now. We're just coming out with a lot of cool tools for those those up-and-comers. Yeah. So I would say that the time before, I would say five years ago, we probably didn't have that much for actors that weren't represented, not as much, right. although we do open the breakdowns up. And, yeah. we, and casting can post out, out of the casting workbook onto the actors that are not to unknowns. Yeah, and we have things that help them find agents and agents pick up actors all the time. But 
we're really unleashing some new stuff for them. And I think that, that, that it's a really going to be a great opportunity for them to be there, to be found, to find an agent, to get information and really great content is coming. I remember when I was uh, really little, I shouldn't even tell the story because my crew doesn't even know this, um, but they, there was a TV show called The Mickey Mouse Club. Disney, I'm sure you've heard of it. Ah, uh, yeah. And anyway, this is a true story. And they had put an ad in the, the, the Globe and Mail or the Toronto Star. They were coming to Canada. They were casting for Mickey. the Mickey Mouse Club. And this was, I was probably like, look at Dylan. He's already laughing. You don't know where the story's going. <laughs> Try to keep it together. <laughs> don't, th you don't, you think you know where this is going, but you don't. And anyway, they put an ad in the newspaper that they were coming to Toronto. I think it was their one Canadian city. And it was an open call. It was an open casting call for talent. And my mother got it in her head that I could do this. <laughs> she felt pretty confident that I could yeah. do this. And I was like, how many days would I be not in school? Okay, maybe two. Okay, yeah, we'd have to go to Toronto, <laughs> drive up. And I thought, sure, why not give it a shot? It was an open call, and they saw this in the newspaper. So, you know, you get there, it's something like this. And this was right around when they cast Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, the Justin Timberlake, like that whole... That whole time, I can't remember the, I, 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 I was like 12 or something like that. Oh and anyway, I got there and just from one ad in a newspaper, lined up as far as I could see, probably four blocks. I bet, honest to God, I bet six, 7,000 people. Damn. No problem. Uh, you know, middle of summer, uh, this was people who wanted their shot to be in front of the casting director to get their chance to do it. And I remember I looked at my mom and I'm like, no way, this is crazy. We're not standing and lot, like there's, there's no chance. Now, if you were to go and do that, so all that to say, I think Dylan was waiting to see if I said that. <laughs> that's all you're getting from that story, pal. But it's illustrating a point that's right. that now with Casting Workbook, that same opportunity could be opened up. Oh. Um, you still have the same challenge. You could, you, you, could you could have thousands of people. Does the casting director, I think that makes it harder for them in a way, doesn't it? There's only so many people you can see in a day and there's got to be people who are deterred by that, that are never going to want to stand in that line, no matter how long. Some who will, you know, you couldn't pay them to leave. Uh, no, I've got a great story for you on this Yeah, one. talk so, to me about that. So one of the things that we did back in, I, I, oh, I got this, started probably about 2005, wait, it was, yeah, about 2005, we were asked, and I can't remember when was Life of Pi, but we were working with Fox, and they wanted to do open casting. They had to get, find Patel. You know, Indian boy uh, for the film. And so we ended up drop shipping cameras to four cities like Mumbai, New Delhi, we were in Bangalore, and had this public casting site. We worked with Ang Lee, their director, the whole, the whole executive casting people at Fox, um, casting wow. directors locally, and then they, they basically found him on the street. So what we did oh, was wow. we, we create public casting sites that allow um, anybody on the street to click a link and upload their video. And we were doing that. That's simple. We did, we've done so many amazing projects that way. I mean, we did The Descendants. We're looking for kids when they can't find them in the agencies and they need to hit the street. Right. You have some obscure, you know, role you need to cast. So we did The Descendants. We bought a zoo, The Sitter, Oh, cool. We've got Elvis. one of the guys from Descendants coming in uh, uh, next oh. week. Dan Payne's coming in. No way. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we, we got to do all these, like, public searches. And what happens is these videos would come in. This is before the app. Right, yeah. So we were doing this. That was quite funny. This was, so we were building these web pages and it would say, hey, and the parents and, and, and would, could sign the kids in and, and then they would upload the video. And what was great is it would come directly into the desktop dashboard of the casting as if they had held the session in their city. So what's great is that the casting person could be filming people here in right. Vancouver and other sessions in LA. And they could also have people coming in from the street everywhere. And to be clear, that's a really cool thing. So you can you have the you have the capability through your software to not only uh, upload the audition, but you can do live, right? Yeah. Like a casting director can say, okay, mm -hmm. at two o'clock, we're all going to be sitting here, and you're going to log in, uh, you know, two o'clock LA time, and we're going to get you to sing, dance, perform for us, whatever. And we yeah. can do that. That they have that control too, right? Yeah, we have the, a whole proprietary system for that. 
within the casting space. That's incredible. We also do some really great stuff. We have apps that run the session. The casting person can check them in, take their Polaroids. We can actually have, you could so be good. in Prague viewing the materials for the actors that are walking in the room live. And as a cameraman clicks on the actor's um, headshot to film them, their, all their materials come up in your hand. And you don't even have to be in the room. It's all permission-based. Wow. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, s talking to Susan Fox, the CEO of Casting Workbook, um, people, I'll put a link down there below where you can check out the site. I think you are providing a, a critical, critical need for the industry. Um, it's such a fascinating company and I love, and I know casting directors feel the same way. And agents who I've talked to, you, you, you've really nailed it and I really hope people will go check it out if they're actors. And I love anything where we can tell hopeful, you know, dreamer actors out there that want to, to, to go and get trained and build a career. There's some really, it's a great time to be doing it and, be, and because of some of the stuff you're doing over at your company, you're really making that, you're proving that, you're making that easier. Will you come back and do the show another time? I would love to do that with you anytime yeah we would love yeah, to hear how it's going you. and as some new stuff comes along uh thank you susan fox for being on the show thank and you. thanks for watching at home uh, vancouver film school storyteller studio we will catch you next oh. time